Hey, welcome back. Bear with me while I tie off this last rope ladder. And then I'll bring you up to date on where I am on building the Black Pearl. Here we are, segment 29, hopefully out of 30. I'm getting relatively close. I'm hoping that with a total of 30 episodes, the build will be pretty much complete. So there's some things I'll show you as far as what I've been up to. I have one climbing rope area yet to work on. I saved that specifically so if you're not familiar with how to tie these knots, I'll give you a lesson on that. Finish that up and then I've got an upper one that goes all the way to the top. But in the meantime, let me uh, discuss some things that I've done show you some things that I think worked out fairly well and I don't think I've talked about what I used for the rope lines and things like that so I'll do a little bit of that in this episode also. So let me uh, get started to show you some of the small things that I added and maybe you'll be interested in doing the same. I'm sure a few of you out there are horrified that I used this teal colored roping for this area here to secure the rope ladders. I just did that on a whim and I kind of like the offset color. This is a fantasy boat of my own so I felt fine in, in breaking the rules for that. Then another thing that's important and I hope I can show it is, and you can see two of them in this shot, there's a, a rod that goes across here, a wooden dowel the smallest size I used because this rope ladder as it goes up it can't get up to this next level and let's see if I can there we go this rope ladder the lower one where it ties in to the bottom of the mast up here they can't climb and get on top so that's what these are designed for and that dowel there gives another platform so that then you can run that up to here and then from there it goes all the way to the top of the highest mast. There it is, all the way up there. To make these supports, I had mentioned earlier I just took the smallest dowel rod that I have, but then I took the file that is triangular shaped and just filed a little groove in where each one of these ropes would go and then on the ends I did the same thing on the end and that helps spread this out and then the next step will be to uh, take the same size rope from here and it goes up to these hooks here. Here's more of the finished ones. You can see one on this side, one on the opposite side, way over here. And then where it's tied in and those go up to these hooks. And then the next layer will go from these dead eyes all the way up to the highest peak. And while we're up here Let's talk about my pirate flag. Again, this is the uh, landscaping fabric, the thinnest layer. And for the swords and skull, I just printed that off on a printer, then was very careful to cut out the shape and then glued on both sides. I made two copies, and they're both right at the same spot and I was able to put a little bit of a curve to it so it looks like it's flowing in the wind and you can see I've tattered the uh, the flag itself I want it to look like that the sails will be similar very happy with that outcome may or may not be 
familiar with is called Force Perspective. And Walt Disney was a master of this at both his parks, mostly the Magic Kingdom in Florida, where the upper part of the building is smaller than the lower part, and it gives a perspective that there's height and the proper uh, perspective from down below, so it doesn't look like a miniature building. On these climbing ladders, you can do the same thing. Now, you get the, the natural inward angle, but as you go higher, if you'll put the ropes closer together, you'll have that same forced perspective and it gives the appearance of distance, like it's further away. And I don't know if you can, if that's illustrated that well in that climbing rope. But that's what I tried to do. And as I went higher, I just put them a little bit closer together. And maybe you can see that there. I finished all those but one. I've saved one for last and uh, I'll show you how you tie those knots. As far as the threads that I used, this is the smaller thread that I used everywhere at um, Hobby Lobby. SEW-ology and the number on it is 1254 two four two. I don't know if you can see but it is a like a braided line or a twisted line so there's at least two or three strands. I don't think I can get close enough to show you that. But I wanted that effect. I didn't want just a string. I wanted it to look like a braided or twisted line. Then for the heavier and unfortunately this is not marked as to what it is. This is quite thick and again it has that rope look to it. And also I found this at Hobby Lobby. Unfortunately, it's not marked as to what the size is or anything. But the thicker is what I use on the outside, and then the thinner is the horizontal. And then throughout the rigging lines, I, for the most part, use the thinner. And then for some, if it looked like a, a supporting piece, I use the thicker. On the topic of dead eyes and the climbing ropes, there are also two small ones way back here. And they're not climbing ropes, they just go up for support. I haven't finished the one there. And then at uh, this is the midship ones, and there was one that's not used. Again, this will have one, but it doesn't go for the climbing rope. It just goes up as a support rope. And on the forward segment, the back two are not part of the climbing rope system. Again, those will just go up and be support ropes. So now I think the next thing is, let's talk about making these climbing ladders and that style knot. You can clearly see why it's a good idea to bring some computer paper out. I cut this kind of uh, triangular, kind of the same shape as the vertical ropes. And then I have some uh, ropes here that maybe shouldn't be, that are go up to different levels that I will have to work around. What I'll use across here is called a clove hitch. And the more you practice it, the more you do it, the better you will get at it. I am a beginner, but let me show you how it's done. I always work from left to right, and you're going to go behind the vertical rope. And on this first one, I'm going across the top, reaching through. This is just a square knot, and that will be the first one. The clove hitch you will go in front of the next rope around behind it and underneath. It will form a little S shape almost. Let me move this up. See how it's kind of an S, maybe a backwards S? Now you're going to go back around 
come through, but when you come around the front, you want to go underneath or in between. And now you're going to have almost like two S's. Hopefully you can see that. I'm purposely doing it. And if you just kind of play, it won't really tug on the other side, but it will tighten up. What I normally do is just slide this right there. And you can actually pull it fairly tight. Now, the thing that's nice about this, I'll be able to slide these down into position. So for right now, I'm not worried about that. So again, we're going in front, around behind, underneath. There's that S kind of shape. Now we're going to go back behind again, come forward. I'm going to reach through and pull this out. And again, around the outside, underneath, back around behind, then reach through that opening, pull it back out, pull it tight. Where it gets tricky is where you run into other rigging lines. But again, behind. Now I'm going to go back behind again. But now I'm going to reach through. Pull that out. And you want to make sure you're not tangled up with this other line. See, I'm not. And I've got one more over here. So again, going around the front of it, underneath it, back to the top, around behind it, come back out, and now I've got to pull it through that loop. Now I can slide these all down to where I want them. Which will be the lowest point possible. Now I am going to run into a problem because of this rigging. So this and I'm going to actually put up higher. Right where that crosses. And then I'll just uh, tie some other ones lower. Main purpose of this was to show you how to make this knot. Once you get that exactly where you want it, you're going to take just a very small amount of super glue. And I've been putting it on each segment. Because I don't want them to move, but especially the outside too, because you're going to have to clip off that thread right there. Okay, let me uh, get started on the rest of them and show you what it looks like finished. making several, I guess, block and tackle, what you might call it. This has two small holes in it. So what I discovered an easy way to do it is to put a loop in the rope and clamp a 
those scissors on there. Then I can put this in the loop the way I want it. With the holes towards the tied side. Then I can spin it a little. And then I put a little bit of super glue on that. And then I spin it more. So I know on some elaborate ships they wrap that with another real small piece of rope or string. I hold it a few seconds, take it out, and then that gives me exactly what I need. I'll clip this little tail off here in just a minute, but I'll go ahead and let it dry. So that's how I've been making those. If you want it to be a little more secure, you can put just a tad or a little drop on each side. I can't say that I had any real rhyme or reason, although I did try to, you can see, kind of a zigzag pattern. I did try to follow a book that I'd purchased, I mentioned it earlier, and I had seen kind of this pattern for support that makes kind of a zigzag. And so I went down and then came back, so I did it, you know, this half and then that half. I did that on each of the masts and all the supports. I do like the look that that has. But as far as the expertise on how to do it, I, I just did it. So I don't have any specifics on how I did it. Same thing with the rigging lines. I just went by feel and how I thought it looked. I still have some more work to do with that.